and gentlemen, it is time for quarterfinal number three. Australia and Canada will be towing the hockey. Please welcome first the reigning Murray Bridge Grand Prix champion from Australia, the Python, Brandon Weenie. And Brendan's opponent, he is a former Klondike Open champion from Canada, Robbie Mills! and a caller, also a darting, darting expert. So thank you for joining me, Preston. You're welcome, I'm glad to be here. And we have just witnessed two quarterfinals. This one is between Brandon Weening and Robbie Mills, two players who wasn't perhaps anticipated to be here, but has proven throughout the tournament that they have got what it takes to well not just be here in the quarterfinal but actually push for the title so we are looking into a very good game I think yeah hopefully I don't know much about these two guys actually so calling me an expert in this match might be a little a little too much but we'll give it a go but one thing you are an expert on is the counting and especially the the route that the players will be going so hopefully you can help us along that way i'll try the best with the best of my abilities that's a good start And this quarterfinal is, of course, first to five legs. So the first player who reaches five legs is through to the semi-final. And the semis of the tournament will be played tomorrow. For the rest of the day, we have 
one more quarterfinal and then we have the finals in the ladies and the men's pairs events. Yeah, we've got uh, two good games coming up there. And we are only a very few darts into this match, but I must say that Robbie Mills already looks settled. And he's looking really good to hold his throw. It's two completely different things, playing the floor matches and then going up on the stage with the crowd like this. So maybe Brandon just needs to get into it, get rid of the starting nerves. So yeah, we're getting there. 102 here. And go for 10 or 6, probably 10. Yeah, and then double 16. Seven. That's a good effort. And he knows that he will at least have three more darts from here. I can say as much as both players averaged above 90 in uh, their last 16 match. Oh, so that, that's not bad. Really, that's really good darts. There you go, 16 darts. Uh, we're just about that average again. So if he can keep it going. Brandon seems to have settled the nerves a little bit, so maybe we're in for a treat. 15. But overall tonight I have been very Whoa. impressed by the players on the stage. Normally we see these players coming from the floor and then it can be quite difficult to deliver your your a game when you actually get up on the stage but so far these players have been doing very well yeah i agree um but i know i've done a, uh, many of the youth tournaments or the U europe cup youth so i know the the youth players that were up on stage earlier the three finals we saw they Basically the same players taking the medals at the uh, at the Europe Cup yeah. use. So so it's all good players. So they they have some stage um, experience, and that means a lot when you if you're up there for the first time, you can get nervous. Um, and I know uh, at least one of the two. No, actually both of the two first um, quarterfinals also been players that are used to the stage. So Barry Van Peer, the match before, Dutch Open champion, in front of a crowd of like three, four thousand, maybe five. So he's used to it. Uh, Haupai Puha from New Zealand. Uh, also a player that has been a lot of stage present. So, yeah. Sixty, so that means that Brandon Weening will have a chance here at the fifty-six. Yeah, probably go for the sixteen and then double top, double twenty. Yeah, then there you go. Seventeen data. He's settled. Brandon has. So. And this is. What really excites me about the, the double VDF tournaments, whether it's the, the World Cup or the Europe Cup, the fact that you get to see all these kinds of players that you didn't necessarily know much about before, but are still very much capable of playing, well, world-class darts. I think that's one of the things about the World Cup. Um, I've attended it 
several times now, but mo all the times before this as a manager. But all the things that people get together, we, we get to know people from around the world and, and everybody's uh, having a lot of fun being here and they're here to be serious about the darts, of course, because it is a World Cup and you're playing for your country. I, I don't think you'll find it more special. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a different atmosphere from the um, many other tournaments where you play for yourself. Here you play for your country. And also, it's good to see that players from around the world, we've got in the men's, I think we've got eight different countries in the quarterfinals. That is saying something. Yeah. Uh, that, that is really good. But not a single Dane Christian. No, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> but, of course, but, but if you look at it, it's a World Cup and you've got eight different countries represented in the men's quarterfinals. Who would have expected that? Yeah, that's a proper World Cup. Well, that's what I mean. So, what we European may think as a surprise might not be for the uh, for the New Zealands or Australians or whatever, because they probably have so many players that we Europeans don't know. Yeah, that's a really good. And point. that's one of the good things about the World Cup, I think, that that we could get to see also the youth players. I think that's amazing. Pressure. Oh, that's coolness. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think you're right. People, people at home in Australia or Canada, they they will say these two players it's no surprise to us that they have made it this probably, far. Probably. And th if they're playing a 90 plus average if I'd known that before the tournament yeah. then I wouldn't have said it was a surprise either. But as I started off uh, this match I don't know the two guys. Brendan Weening I think I've heard of him but Robbie Mills I never heard of. But done two 16 darters and playing 90 plus averages, then you are good. It's a really good game of darts now. Probably go for the triple twenty. And triple nineteen. And triple triple six. No. Whoa. Okay, that's a surprise, but okay. I think he left thirty four, yeah. Yeah, normally you would have seen players go for the triple sixteen on or the, the last or the triple twenty. Yeah, but, but that seems but to be blocked. Yeah. But if it's a double 17, he's right. <laughs> That's correct. The winner's always right. But he wasn't under that much pressure. But 151 is doable. Probably 20, triple 20 and triple 17 tops. Yep, that's one of them. Here oh. we go. Oh. Double 20. Oh, what a shot. That's clinical. What a finish by that Robbie Mills. Yeah, that was a great finish under a lot of pressure. Well done. And now you could actually argue that it was a genuine mistake by Brandon Weening going for that yeah, triple as, 18 on as his last missed the, the problem with double 17 is I know the, the space is just the same on all the doubles, the outer ring doubles. But the problem is when he goes inside, it's a 17. He needs to dart. He needs to burn a dart, as we say, to 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 get it onto an even score. Oh, 
And since it was his second dart that went into the 17, he couldn't fix it on one dart. So. But it's so much pressure up there, so. I mean, sometimes you do make mistakes, even though you're a brilliant player. But just looking at his numbers right now, Brandon Weening, he has won eight PDC Australian Tour titles on, yeah, on the DPA Tour, as as we call it. That is, that is a lot of. Uh, tournament wins mm. especially on a very competitive tour uh, I was a bit surprised that a player of this caliber hasn't played on the World Series when the PDC go to to Australia and New Zealand but that just shows how much talent there is in in these parts of the world yeah I think there are more darts players than we are here in Denmark <laughs> He probably needs a few travels here. And that doesn't help. He shakes his head. Not happy. So, it's a good chance for Robbie here to 48 go 16. Yeah, double 16. Yeah, there you go. Good finish. Yeah, that's his second yeah. ton plus finish of the match and also a 96 average yeah, so far. Yeah, that's really good darts. Really good. So especially coming from the floor with a 90 average and then going on to the stage. Normally you drop a couple, <laughs> but he's just put more quality on top of that. He's playing well now. I don't think Brandon's playing that badly, actually. No, not at all. He's averaging 85. And I was just thinking that if you would have told Brandon that he five legs into the match would have been averaging 85, then I think he would have thought that the match would have been a bit closer. He yeah, prob probably. He has really needed to play his A game. And I know for a fact, because we, we have stats that tell that, that he has played with 100 average before. Yeah. So we know he can do this, but still it, it, it's about doing it. It's about doing enough. it now. And it, it, he's not, you've got to remember these guys are not just playing for themselves up there. They're playing for a team. So it's a lot more pressure. I mean, if you play for yourself and you lose, you can go, go back and say, OK, it's only, only hurt me. But now it's, it's for the team. That is, that is a whole different ball game. And also, that is extremely unlucky for Brandon here. But still, quite a healthy lead. Yeah. Looking good, but it's shrinking. Still, Brandon still favourite for the leg. Go for the triple twenty, and then a triple twenty again. Oh, that's a good dart. Oh, and triple eighteen maybe. No, it's seventy. No, left seventy four, seventy eight left. Yeah, yeah, ninety four. Left twenty four. So two triple twenties for Robbie for the match. That's one of them. I nearly thought he. Yeah, that would have been sensational. Century checkout. Oh, that's good stuff. 128 leaves 16. There's a really pressure on the Brand on Brandon now. It's double 12. Oh yeah, it's a good shot. He's still in it. It's only one break. So I think that's how he's gonna 
go about it. So I'm only going to break him once. Yeah, I think he... Wow. It's actually opposite. It's Robbie who, who has to throw here. So Brandon will have to break the throw twice. No, because they pull up in the last one. Well, there you go. Yeah, That's why you're you go. the expert. That's oh, Q. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, that's the difference between a normal tournament where we pull up from the f from the beginning of the leg, and then we play straight straight through. But in the World Cups and the Europe Cups, all the WDF Cups, they um, they draw lots or be pressed random on the on the tablet, and it chooses randomly who starts the first leg. But it's if this match should go to four all, uh, you will hear. My colleague down on the stage, Nick Rolls, saying that we have to bull up in the final leg. Not. And that's a part of the game that I often miss when watching these big TV tournaments. I, I think the bull up is often one of the most exciting parts of the game. Yeah, because it's really in these games where they play so well. I mean, 90 plus averages. It means the world to get the advantage of the throw. I mean, if you if you use 51 darts per leg, as I often do, yeah. then it doesn't really matter because that's sometimes who hits the double one first. <laughs> but for these guys who's playing uh, the way they, they do, with that high level that they do, it's really important to have the throw. Oh, that's a good shot here for, for Robbie putting the pressure back on. But 69 is a good chance to break. It's a really good chance to break. I don't know what route he will prefer, but triple 19 or triple 15 would be my guess. Yeah, then he got probably 18. Ooh. Nearly hit the triple. Double 16? Oh, he did it. That's a great shot. It's a great finish under that much pressure. Robbie left on 40 for the match. So now he got the break. And also we got a real game on our hands here. Both players averaging above 90 now. Well, it's good darts. Good darts for a, for a quarterfinal. So if Brandon can hold his throw here, we will have to see the bull up. That's a bad start though. He won't be happy with that. Well, didn't take advantage of that. You get the feeling that when Brandon has his first start just right above the treble, then yeah. it's such a good guide for yeah, him. Or in the top of the treble yeah. bed. Yeah. It's going to be a close call, this. Nothing in it, this leg. That could be expensive. And this is a real opportunity for Robbie Mills. It really is. Oh, yeah, and he's taken it. 140. So now he's taken the darts off Brandon. Still, Brandon has the chance if he can go out in I six think he darts. Took, he took a chance there, throwing for the treble 20 with the last dart. Yeah, definitely. He, he could have gone for the ball. If he'd hit 25, he'd have left 167, which is possible out shot. The 177 isn't. So now Robbie knows that he will come back for the 95 for the match. But maybe Brandon can put some pressure on him here. That was not what he's been hoping for. Go for the triple 19, maybe? Yeah, triple 20. And then probably triple 12 or triple 16, the other option. So he left 56. So now Brandon, one, three, two. He'd probably go for the ball tie. Because the 25 will leave him an opportunity for a 107 finish. 
Yeah, the ball's going one more. Oh, oh. and the 17. Yeah, yeah and then he leaves 40. But Robbie here, 56. 16 double top for the match. And a place in the semi finals. That's the 16. There you go. That's a medal for Canada. And also, after a very, very good match by Robbie Mills, he has been so, so efficient on his doubles. And he's now ready for the semi finals. As you said, Christian, he will play either Germany's Frank Bruns or Markus Straub from Austria. Yeah. Gonna be another good game. And that is a game that we will have on the stage in just a few moments. Christian, thank you so much for joining me up here. You're welcome, I loved it. And we'll be back in just a few moments time. So hang on and then we've got another men's quarterfinal.